And we are rolling. In chapter 24 of Superbugs, what did you mean by anthrax? Anthrax is something that doctors haven't been thinking about until recently. Uh, it is a toxin produced by a bacterium called Bacillus anthracis. And anthrax is something that typically lives on animals. It's a bacterium that um, only occasionally gets to humans, but recently it's been weaponized. And that rogue scientists can figure out a way to purify the toxin from this bacterium. And that's what we saw um, not too long ago, actually, when it was being mailed to politicians, the toxin, and freaking people out. Um, it thought to be something that had gone away, but we've found something really unusual and something I decided to continue to write about in Superbugs, which is that Bacillus anthracis lives on reindeer. And sometimes when those reindeer die, they end up below a level of permafrost. And in Russia, a few years ago, that permafrost started melting. And as it melted, those reindeer carcasses went up to the surface. And the anthrax that was on them, that had been frozen for generations, suddenly emerged and became alive. And was something that we had to fear and actually evacuate people from Russia for fear that the changing of the climate may expose them to this toxin. And it was something when I started writing Superbugs, I never dreamed that I would be including but now uh, has become a public health issue. Where do we use antibiotics aside from a doctor giving it to a sick patient? Well, the interesting thing about antibiotics is that you can use them pretty much anywhere you want, uh, and that becomes the problem. One of the reasons that we have superbugs is that we have been misusing antibiotics. You know, there's commonly the idea of the doctor giving the patient antibiotics, whether or not that is appropriate or inappropriate. But we should also remember that dentists prescribe antibiotics. Uh, think about your toothache and when it won't go away. Uh, there is a new study that says up to 80% of antibiotics prescribed by dentists may actually be inappropriate. That's just from healthcare providers. Then think about how we use antibiotics in commercial agriculture. Uh, I come from Florida, in the Florida orange groves. We pump full of antibiotics to protect the crops. This is a good thing on the one hand that we protect the crops, but the downside is that the soil where those orange groves are growing are teeming with superbugs because the bacteria that live there have been exposed to antibiotics and they're figuring out ways to mutate and evolve to evade these antibiotics. Another example is in um, farming, meat producing animals. You know, we pump pigs and chicken and livestock full of antibiotics not to keep them healthy but because it makes the meat on their bones bigger. And we've been trying to cut back on that because when you go to the meat aisle, many of the uh, slabs of meat that are in the frozen section uh, actually contain drug-resistant bacteria because the animals got exposed to antibiotics. Uh, I could go on and on. Another place is um, when animals are rescued. Pets uh, are pumped full of antibiotics before they're given new owners in, a, in an attempt to heal them. And there was an outbreak of a superbug a couple of years ago where uh, these pets were given to new owners and they licked their owners faces and the bacteria in their mouths were transferred to the owners and they were full of drug resistant superbugs. So one of the things that we can do to curb the promotion of these dangerous pathogens is to make sure we use antibiotics appropriately and that turns out to be a rather difficult thing to do. Are humans responsible for the spread of antibiotic resistant bacteria? Well we're playing a role in creating them by misusing antibiotics. And then the question is, how do they get from one person to another? Every bacterium uh, or fungus or parasite or virus has a different level of pathogenicity, and it also has a different level of distribution where it can go from one person to another. So some things pass very easily from one person to another. A classic example is C. diff. Perhaps the most contagious thing would be measles. If I had measles and I sneezed in a crowded room, I could expose hundreds of people. Then there are bacteria like MRSA, which may be living on my skin right now, that doesn't spread all that quickly. In fact, I could rub up against somebody and I wouldn't necessarily spread the, the bacterium to them. So what we spend a lot of time doing is coming up with um, 
infection prevention and control mechanisms so that we identify what are the dangerous pathogens and then what precautions do people need to take. And it turns out that's pathogen specific. There's not a one size fits all approach. The way to protect yourself from MRSA is different than the way to protect yourself from tuberculosis. And that's different than the way to protect yourself from Clostridium difficile, which is different than the way to protect yourself from anthrax. So a lot of time and energy is spent saying, how do we protect people without freaking them out? 